to show you a little bit about how we've integrated the experiences here, let me show you, let me dive into the uh, calendar here. Now, one of the first things you'll notice in the calendar, is they've got a couple different colors up there, right? We've got blue and red appointments. The blue appointments are my Outlook calendar. That's my work, that's my work calendar. The red appointments are my personal calendar. Those are coming down off my Windows Live calendar. So I've got multi-calendar access here. Is I, if I added a Gmail account to my phone and I have calendar items on my Gmail account, those will show up here as well. I can select a color, a custom color for that, say I want them green or yellow. They're going to show up here as well. It's very easy for me to differentiate what appointments are personal, what appointments are business. Maybe I've got several clients I work with. I use different accounts for different clients. And I can see that the yellow ones represent client X, the green ones represent client Y, and I can see who I'm meeting with at a glance. Now, we've got a team meeting today at 6 at our Microsoft campus here. So I'm just going to jump into that. And like you'd expect, there's my meeting details, nothing special there, except the colored text. Now what that colored text is, is an address where we're meeting. In the operating system, in the past, it, what it's done is it's been able to recognize phone numbers so I can just simply tap a phone number to dial it. Well now it's gone beyond that. It not only recognizes phone numbers, it also recognizes addresses. So I didn't do anything special with this address. I just typed it into the location on my Outlook and created an appointment. I didn't create any kind of hyperlink URL or anything fancy. Just put it in there. The operating system said, that's an address. And it figured it out. So if I tap on that address, Usually that means I want to know where the heck I'm going. So intelligently the phone says, all right, you want to know where that address is. So it jumps me right into our Bing Maps application. As it pulls up some maps, I'm going to zoom in. And you'll notice as I zoom in on these maps, the map, the tiles blend together. They don't just repaint up there like somebody throwing playing cards on a table. They blend together nicely and seamlessly. As I move in here, I can move in as I get closer. It repaints and it knows that, hey, as you get closer in, you probably don't want a street view. You probably want more of a satellite view, an overhead view of that. Yeah. So it gives me a different view automatically and dynamically. Now I can access more data by tapping at the bottom. I can turn off the aerial view, show traffic, zoom out, whatever I want to do. So I zoom back out a little bit. Zoom in, zoom out. It changes. Everything fades back out and it goes back to a street level view. So intelligently the phone um, anticipates what you want and it tries to deliver that to you. Let's back up. Every, my, every Windows phone has a back button. So I don't have to go back to a home page and back into what I'm at. I can just back up a step if I wanted to like that. And I can be right back in my calendar. A couple of things I forgot to show you there. We've actually got an agenda view that now looks like an agenda view. And in the month, I can see how busy my days are at a glance, and how many items I have every day to deal with on my calendar, on my month view, and I can just simply dive into any day in a single tap, and it takes me right there so I can uh, deal with my calendar. Now, every Windows phone will also have integrated search. What we're using, obviously, is Bing, our search engine, our decision engine. They also have three buttons across there. I've got a back button, I've got a start button that takes me to the start experience, and I've got a search button down here on the other side. So as I tap the search button, it brings me to my Bing search page. Right here, I can search on a term. I can search on something different every time. Um, uh, the, let's do what Joe did the other day. Yeah. I'll, do, I'll do pizza again, I guess. So I can search on pizza. Can't come up with a food type right now. Not hungry. So when I go into my search, search for pizza, I don't have to sort through web pages, wait for web pages to load. The decision engine on Bing brings up the information that I need for me. I've got a map view at the top. I can tap on that. It'll pop me into the maps and show me where I'm located and where these other restaurants for pizza, for pizza are located in relation to me. And it's intelligent. It knows where I am. So it's going to sort these by distance from me, the closest to the furthest. If I wanted to go to Pizza's Numero Uno, I can select it. I can get directions with a single tap. With another single tap, I can call them up. If there were reviews on this restaurant through different sources like Yelp and so on, they would show up here. We're currently populating this information for different European countries 
into uh, the Bing database now. I can see what's nearby if I want parking. Maybe I want to move, take in a movie after I eat. I can find out there's a movie theater nearby or a club to go to or, you know. Now, I can also go back here and check out different information on the web. So, if I want to go to Wikipedia and find out information about pizza, I can select that link and it's going to dive out automatically launching the Internet Explorer browser and taking me to the new Internet Explorer experience. Now, the new Internet Explorer is based on uh, our IE experience on the desktop. And what we've done is a few things here. So the first thing I want to point out is that this page is zoomed all the way out. But you can read it, right? It's hard to do on a lot of phones right now. It's a WVGA screen, and we've done a lot of work with the text, character spacing, uh, the fonts, and the way we work with the, with the uh, pixels, pixel placement, to make it very crisp, very readable. So even at very zoomed out levels, you can make out what's there, you can read the text, and it becomes a more pleasurable experience to browse the web on your phone. I can do things like double tap on a column and it zooms me and snaps me to that column to make it easily readable. Or, fingers are sticky. Sorry. I can zoom in with multi touch if I want to. And I can zoom way in if the thing responds to my sticky fingers. Um, and you'll notice, even at really, really high zoom levels, I still have very smooth corners, very sharp edges, right? very legible text. And I can come up here and say, grab the Wikipedia corner, let's do something else. So let's grab that picture there. And if I want to come back to the site in the future, I can bring up the ability to pin this to my start page. And what it's going to do is it's going to pin a high, a very sharp, crisp, higher resolution image to my start menu here. So down at the bottom, there's the exact image that I had, where I was on that website. So I can lock in on, on a logo or whatever I want, so it's easily identifiable to me. I know you can do this on several other phones, but they're not going to do it with this sharper text, as crisp a shot as this is. And it's not, that's nothing compared to how nice it looks on the actual phone. That's what you're seeing on the projector there.